Go to the year when she was at Penn State, continuing to put her fingerprints on this program. Big Ten opener underway. It's like Christmas before Christmas. It does feel that way. A little, it's a little appetizer to get you excited for the end of the month and post the holidays too. Antonia Bates is nowhere to go against Scalia. Looking Ooh. back door to Adams, but the finish is not there. First gets caught ball watching. Just missed the easy lay-in. Kayleen Smichael going up strong. No whistle. One more try. And there you see the work on the board. It's coming to fruition. At point, Indiana wants to force Rutgers to grind it out in the half court because the losers are so disciplined. It'll be Rutgers basketball. Thompson bringing it up, stepping into the starting lineup. They're without their normal starting point guard. And Maya Pettacorn continues to be day-to-day -day with an injury. We will not see her today. The transfer. And it's been the freshman filling that role since. Here she takes this step back. That's left short. And that's exactly the shot that Indiana will allow. Those tough twos. That's exactly as you see Garazone drive all the way and get the lane to go. And Thompson's a freshman. The only way you can learn is by getting reps in the Big Ten level. And Scalia, you can force Thompson to take an off-balance shot. That's exactly what Indiana wants to force. They work through Cornwell at the high post. Michael has one of the best defenders in the Big Ten on her, and she knocks it away. Chloe Moore McNeil, all Big Ten defensive team last year. Moore McNeil constantly has to guard the best player on the opposing team. She does a great job timing everything. Defends without fouling. She's quick with her feet. I love her ability to time things up where she's very disciplined with when she's going to go up for a block. And whistle. It's going to be on Cornwell. That is her first. Moving screen on Porco. Leading Holmes in the post works several times. And she's so quick with that hip swing, gets her shoulder spare to the basket every time. Efficient. Parrish guarding the center in Cornwell. She powers it up and through, but travels. That was the right call by the official. Cornwell picking up her feet a little too much, pitter pattering down in the paint. Rutgers bringing some full court pressure. I mean, she does a great job holding Cornwell on her back. She had that seal perfectly up the lane. Sarah Scalia, 2 on 1, makes them pay. And one word for you automatic. Scalia. Smichael calls her own number and drains the three. Rutgers is going to give a lot of people problems. Both Scarlet Knight buckets coming from her hand as Garzone penetrating. Pulls up, can't knock it down. Great effort by Adams, one of the toughest rebounders we'll see in this conference. Herder puts it on the floor, taken by Holmes. And good job by Indiana getting back in transition D to make that a tough look. Or McNeil travels herself, He's looking for that jab step. They're allowing a ton of movement for Indiana freely. Lob into Adams, and she goes to work. Great job by Adams, keeping that play alive. The pass was not perfect, but she still was able to catch, gather, then rebalance for the finish. Meister as Parrish finds herself completely alone in the paint for an easy two. Parrish comes off of screens so well. Michael being guarded by Garzone, splitting the defense and attacking, leaving it out for Bates, and she drains the three. Playmaking ability from Smichael. The high ball, uh, high hedge comes. She breaks it down, splits the defense, gets the paint touch for an open look. She talked this week about how she defers more to her teammates than looking for her own shot, but that time, able to get it to fall. Kenzie Holmes travels. Kayleen Smeichel, so smart here. The high hedge comes. Smeichel dribbles through, breaks it, draws two defenders. It's a wide open look for base. Fantastic playmaking. One second left for Thompson. Does not, I don't believe, get it off in time. And the only ever men or women. 3,000 points, at least 750 assists and 750 rebounds as well. As the milestones just keep coming. Is that good or something? It appears, it does appear so. <laughs>
Uh, she's unbelievable, and it's just elevated women's basketball completely. And I tell you what, it's a good time to be in the Big Ten Conference. There's talent all over the league. And she is eyeing this season the all-time record by Kelsey Plump. Adams there turns it over. They were combined 12 turnovers in that first half as neither team really found its footing offensively. And Adams lowered that shoulder, got called for the offensive foul simply by lowering, initiating that contact. It's been a little sloppy on both ends for Rutgers and Indiana. No one's settled into a rhythm quite yet. This is the first Big Ten game you're playing at now, a high level. It's more physical. It's faster. It's going to take a while for both teams to find a little bit of a rhythm. They're able to find Holmes with the mismatch. She quickly kicks out. Rutgers moving defensively, but getting free. More McNeil. Rutgers got caught ball watching. More McNeil able to make them pay quickly getting to the basket. We're seeing a lot of attention on that side on Mackenzie Holmes. It's only taken one shot so far. Rutgers trying to front her as much as possible, make it difficult for Indiana to get that paint touch through Holmes. Thompson, the long two. And this fire's there. Landing in the hands, though, of Cornwell, and that will turn into a potential three-point play. Cornwell in 25 minutes had just five points, one for seven, four rebounds for her. It's a very quiet game because they're so used to that consistency. That's the kind of play that I can think can help spark her in this one. Parrish looking into the posts. Cornwell continuing to front Mackenzie Holmes and then she finishes. That's how it's done. Driving into the paint, drawing multiple defenders. Holmes wide open. Near right, those post touches have been hard to come by. That time taking a guard, penetrating, and finding her open. Cornwell working the glass. Once the shot goes up, she's constantly trying to find a body to make sure she has the proper positioning to get the board. Coach Washington says some players like her just have this knack for attacking the glass. You see it over and over again. Number one in the Big Ten in offensive rebounds per game. Door, and there is Sydney experience playing together. This Indiana team has me see it on plays like that as Cornwell loses it. Bargesser up ahead to Moore McNeil. Parrish oh. has that block. Driving into the paint, passing into the paint. The Hoosiers live off of paint touches. Moore McNeil deep in the corner. Holmes tries to go after it, lands in the hands of Parrish have to get to the line. December 18th. Download Big Ten Plus and subscribe today. And look at Indiana. They take on Evansville. There we go, partner. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> Underneath is Parrish. Forces it up. Meister can't poke down. Not that I can think of off the top of my head. No. She would be number one. Maybe actually. like Lisa Leslie or you know, somebody. <laughs> We're tired. Stolen away. It just wants our players to be a little smarter about picking and choosing when they're going to try to make the home run play. And we're just going to dial it back. Indiana's offense, meanwhile, all for its last five against the Scarlet Knight defense. Into Holmes through the double team. Nice job by Holmes staying balanced, finishing with her shoulder square to the basket. Rutgers is trying to make it as difficult as possible to double. She is three for three, having to find her opportunities besides traditional post-ups. Indiana almost turning it over a couple of times. It's better than anybody that you just have to be tough down in the paint. You're not necessarily going to get a ton of calls. So Indiana is in the bonus, sending Chloe Moore McNeil to the free throw line. This team shooting just 70% as a team from the line. So you brought up Megan, they're not getting That was the most obvious thing I will probably say today. But still true. It's true. Kayleen Smeichel has had a couple forced at the rim, but sticky job of staying active on the offensive glass. It's one of the strong suits of this team. They get 14 offensive rebounds a game, but it's because they get good positioning when the shot goes up. It's almost like they box out their defender in order to get the position. Big Ten. No 
has the high expectations for this group. Largest lead of the game for Indiana. And oh. into it right there. Oh. Brown had a ton of space. Holmes was back on the B1G logo. Nice job spreading the floor, making those shots. Oh, my goodness. Glory of offense. Which was hard to find consistency in. The majority of this game so far on both sides. Bates, same spot. God, Adams had open looks that are cool. Adams one for six. More McNeil all alone. Using the screen from Brown. Three to shoot. It'll be Bates, the baseline. Not close. Initially, if the post player has been on point. So what does Indiana do? No, they have to find a way to reverse the ball quicker. If Indiana can get ball reversals, it will force Rutgers defense to shift. Holmes will be open on the opposite side. Rutgers defense also forcing Indiana to two of 11 from three-point range, and that certainly doesn't help either. Ooh, Sailing Michael through the teeth of the defense and an easy two. Like, you know whenever you're wrapping a present because it's Christmas and the scissors slide so through, like nicely through the paper, that's what Kayleen Smeichel just looked like dicing through the defense. No more satisfying feeling, and I'm sure that play for her was the same thing. Had to be. And she finished it with the bow on top. Well done. Merry Christmas. Five to shoot. Here's Holmes into the paint, and she flips it up in it. And that time as the play broke down, the defense broke down. Holmes was able to get a touch in the paint. Here is Adams awkwardly flipping it up, and Holmes takes control. Parrish continues to do a nice job cutting off angles. And they want to. It's only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Second in a row. Solid, steady first half for the Scarlet Knights. Hit two threes that time. Holmes right in her face. Cornwell, strong move. Nice job by Cornwell. You think that her game is power, but showing off a lot of finesse to get the shots that this offense needs, but also to look for her own. She does. Indiana has success when they can get paint touches, whether that be on the drive, cutting, post up, whatever it might be. It spreads the defense. Indiana's largest lead in the first half, just two possessions. Expanding on that now. Bates wants it against Holmes. So Brown wants it rather. Underneath it is Smeichel. For Rutgers offensively, Smeichel does a nice job getting range to the eye lines out of her teammate. to more McNeil. Aggressive defense by the Scarlet Knights. The Hoosiers haven't had anywhere to go, but at the last moment. It's a nice job by Rutgers defensively speeding Indiana up, but they stayed patient enough to wait till the very end to give it to their superstar. They kept getting pushed further and further away from the baskets, and then all of a sudden, break free. So Thompson thinks against that three. Here's Brown. Looking into the post, finds Gare zone, a strong look for three. No whistle there, she crashes to the floor, and Rutgers has got it. Bates tries to get it up ahead to Thompson, it was there, but a turnover. Parrish along the baseline, that's how you find Holmes. Holmes with 12 points, leading all scores. Largest lead of the game for Indiana. But Rutgers has stayed within striking distance. Thompson, a difficult shot. Hey, 
Kaylin Smichael just falling off the front of the iron, but a well-executed baseline out of bounds. My favorite block, baseline out of bounds. Screen the screener. The screener is always the most open person on a play. I love that play. Washington pushing ahead to in two points. Right there at the rim. Scalia can't corral it. And out ahead, Kayleen Smichael turning on. And she's perfect, we should mention, from the floor as well with her 15 points. Sydney Parrish puts it away. Discipline that Mackenzie Holmes has. Her fundamentals are so sound. The quickness of her hips, her footwork, it is something to see. Sandra virtually unblockable. She's second on Rutgers with nine points behind Kaylin Smichael's 11. Coming alive in the second half, another grad student. And to shoot for Indiana. The kick out, Parrish, and she's... And they get back to work. Thompson Ooh. off one leg. She's not been able to score here, 0 for 5 now. And Thompson starts to consistently make that shot. She's only a freshman, keep in mind. She's going to be dangerous. And a Beaumont who played with Lisa Thompson in AAU ball in high school. Onto the floor for the first time. And there is Sydney Parrish. The Parrish cuts so hard to the basket and makes it difficult to stop her once she gets momentum. 14 points, 6 of 10 shooting. And they've been usually easy ones, like you just saw. Michael trying to turn the corner and she's got 13. Parrish puts it on the deck, but Brown says no and rips it off. And the elbow to the head right in front of the official. I like how aggressive Brown has stayed, though. Steve McKenzie Holmes back in the game. See if Indiana can continue trying to get the ball inside to her. Well, getting the assignment, taking up a lot of space in the paint. Holmes has got it one on one, and that's what she does. Lindsay Holmes, and she's below that B1G at the top of the arc. It's pretty much an automatic bucket because she does not need a ton of move, movement. Oh my goodness, room to move. That's what I'm trying to say. Her ability to just feel that defender behind her too. That's the kind of play that is a beautiful thing to watch. It leaves you speechless. Example right here. Antonia Bates has gone. McNeil directing traffic guarded by the lengthy Bates. Confronting Holmes in the post. 54 against 54. Five to shoot for gear zone. Working around that screen. She's in trouble. Open. That's not going to fall for Beaumont. Great job by Parrish working the glass. Holmes powers it up and through. I don't know how she did that, but somehow Holmes finds a way to get down their split defenders. That was impressive. That's something Coach Morin and his coaching staff wants to see more from Holmes, the aggressiveness on the glass. Well, Parrish comes flying in. And then Holt just sneaks in out of nowhere. Last second, boom, uses her size. She has tremendous feel around the basket. She doesn't even have to be squared up to the rim. Her touch is unbelievable. Soft finish right over the front of the rim. Big shooting two for the Scarlet Knights. Trying to make sure the Scarlet Knights stay threatening against this number 16 team in the country. Important free throws there. And Indiana's got it under 10 seconds on the clock in the third. Or McNeil will take it all the way, no whistle. And that is the end of the third quarter. Indiana leading. 49 to 41 here on the road, looking to go to 1 and 0. You know, babies love remote controls, by the way. I didn't hear anything you just said. I was watching that baby and how cute it was. But they love remote controls. I don't know what it is. 
And to bring it to a basketball contest? How about it? Some attachment. Nicely done. Good seal. Sandra Brown into the paint, and she'll be shooting too. Holmes tries to get around her. Brown continues to seal up the lane. Nice job. Didn't even shoot. It's two for two in the second, but it has been this second half where she has flourished. She's been impactful getting offensive rebounds, creating second chance opportunities in defense. Today. My goodness, how quick is Mackenzie Holmes' footwork? It's like watching the Nutcracker. It's the holidays. The ballerina footwork. Ballet-esque. That's what she has in the post. Time after time, Holmes 21 points, 10 of 11 from the floor. Barreling in for the offensive rebound, but it goes out to Scalia. Here's zone. Cuts back door. Good recovery defensively by Rutgers. Home spreading the love finds their zone, and she can't put it down. Rutgers did a nice job that defensive possession, scrambling and getting to their spots. Up ahead. Beating down every then Indiana's along the baseline. Scalia is smothered. It's Michael leading the break. And it is Adams at the rim with the finish. Nice spacing by Adams and Smichael. Adams continues to dive to the rim, gets into the eyeline side of her team and makes it work. Indiana has led by as many as 11. Rutgers feeling it now. They've gotten back in this game because they've gotten defensive stops. Holmes bottled up, but by herself is Gerzon. A clutch finish and bucket for the Hoosiers withstanding this threat from the Scarlet Knights in the fourth. Oh, great steal. Gerzon leaking out ahead. She's hit hard and will shoot two. Herter seemed to think that she got all ball. It was a smart foul by Herter. It's a good foul. foul. Yeah. Had a good try. One more to shoot. Antonia Bates back running this offense. In favor of Lisa Thompson, a freshman. Michael in the paint likes to operate from the high post. Looking into Adams, she has it against Parrish. Spins, cannot. With everything that she does, whether it is hitting the glass. Rebounds at such a high level. She's averaging eight boards a game, but had 17 rebounds earlier this season. It's insane. Almost like a video game number. Is it something like 29 the first two games of the year? Something like that. <laughs> and Indiana's offense goes back to work. Ten on the clock for Gerzon. She gets into the paint, rises. She is so patient, never gets sped up. She lets the defense blow by her before she gets squared and lets it go. Those kind of moments, those kind of shots is what Coach Moore wants to see. They want her to have more attitude, more moxie on the floor. And that's a big time shot and finish. Smichael getting free, but it's left short. And no surprise in the hands of Adams. Sticking with their core group here. Six of her eight points here in the fourth quarter alone. She's done a great job of getting to the basket. Adams, offensive rebounding has been her strength. Maybe there's a line on the court. She maybe you know, tripped yeah. over. Those lines get me all the time when I'm walking outside. <laughs> Mackenzie Holmes gets the position and puts it. Three points, the fifth 20 point output this season. Four points. Smackle's slight hesitations give her the head that she needs just to get to the basket and beat her defender. Now 15 points for the sophomore. 
Holmes waiting for that lob, and it's right there. Mackenzie Holmes, 25 points, 12 of 14. And Rutgers turns it over. Gearzone up ahead, zipping the pass. All five starters were on that Big Ten championship team a year ago. Indiana has that chemistry, and they have that experience together. It's going to be huge down the stretch. This is the largest lead of the game for Indiana. The Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. And you heard from Rafael feeling like the Buckeyes with 60% from the field this season. Nice to keep it in play. And out ahead to Smichael into the chest of Stalia for Holmes. Looking into gear zone. And she leaves it short. Adams finds herself alone. And she... <laughs> McNeil, the inbounder, into Holmes in a tight spot. She has to get it up. And a shot clock violation. Antonia Bates has taken the reins of this offense, especially in the second half, looking poised and composed. They're going to run out of time. They've got to go. Can't run your typical half-court set as Michael is fouled. This is the rest of the Scarlet Knights conference up with Coach Washington. And be disciplined when you're going against a top 25 team. Taking it out, Adams guarding her. And that's the player they were able to pull away late. Flies her and run that offense through Holmes, even when players like Scalia were pulled from outside. About Mackenzie Holmes. Herder is going to have to throw up a three. That is left short. Brown flowing together. I think there's a lot they can take away from this one. There's a lot of new faces for Rutgers who are playing impact minutes. Great defensive pin. They made Mackenzie Holmes pretty ineffective in the first half. She only had four shot attempts. So if they can piece together four quarters of a game with that type of defensive intent, every single time Scalia shot it, she was never shoulder squared, feet set because she had a Rutgers player tagging. Coach Warren has talked about some of the looks you see on faces when you're implementing that defense. And now she is settling with the rest of the Hoosiers. Sarah Scalia likes to play three-point line to three-point line if she could. But now she's playing defense a lot better. It's been fun to watch her transformation. That three not there for Brown. And Rutgers is going to end up coming up short. Indiana able to pull away down the stretch, lean on that experience. And the defending champs start Big Ten play 1-0. You just have to find a way playing on the road.